Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. Uh, uh, we'll begin uh, with a word of prayer. So can I ask one of our students to please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Nobody wants to pray. Kushbu, can I ask you to pray, please? You can unmute your mic and pray. Uh, today I'm taking class from uh, home because it's uh, been raining the last three days here in our city. And so we've asked, been asked to take uh, classes from our home. So that's why we're not, I'm not in the Bible college, but uh, I'd like to just welcome uh, all of you, thank you all for joining. Our uh, in-person students are also joining me online. Thank you online students for also joining us this morning. And also welcome to our e-learning students. Um, so can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Kushpu, can you please lead us in prayer? Let, let us pray. Thank you, Julianne. We, we want to give you glory and honor once again, dear Lord. We thank you for the gift of life for this day, Father. As we gather to continue learning, dear Lord, would you help us to understand, to follow, to be guided, to be counseled by everything that we receive. Press our lecturer, pastor, dear Lord, be with her, Lord, as she communicates your truth. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you. Uh, so this morning we uh, will begin uh, studying chapter uh, five. Uh, we've uh, uh, we looked at chapter four last uh, week. We uh, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, uh, how the Holy Spirit guides us, and we looked at uh, common ways in which we receive um, uh, guidance, uh, leading. Uh, or how the Holy Spirit reveals God's will to us, to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so we looked at the quickening of scripture, assurance within, uh, desire, knowing, prompting, stirring, uh, foreknowledge, and warning within. And uh, we saw, we looked at each one of these um, common ways uh, through how, through which the Holy Spirit uh, bears inner witness in our spirit man and reveals the plans, the purposes, and the will of God to um, us. We'll move on to chapter um, uh, 5, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit speaks to us even today. It's not only in Bible times, not only in the early church, um, but also today. Uh, he speaks to us. So throughout the Bible, we see men and women who've heard the voice of God. Uh, just a few uh, recorded instances in the scripture where we uh, know that, you know, or, uh, we have people uh, testifying that the Spirit spoke to them. Uh, so in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 24, uh, we see Ezekiel saying that, you know, the spirit entered him and, uh, and spoke with him and said and asked him to, you know, go shut yourself inside your house. So uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to him, gave him specific instructions of going into his house, shutting the door uh, behind him. Okay, and also he testifies in Ezekiel chapter 11, uh, verse 5. He says, uh, you know, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon him and said, speak. And um, and he just spoke what the Lord uh, put in his uh, spirit or in his uh, heart. Okay, and in Acts chapter 8, verse 29, uh, Philip testifies to saying that, you know, the Holy Spirit told him uh, to go near and overtake the 
a chariot and we know that he did that and you know how he ministered to the Ethiopian eunuch who was on that chariot. Acts chapter 10 verse 19 we read that uh, you know Peter through a vision uh, you know how the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said you know uh, Peter there are three men uh, looking for you uh, you know just go with them don't ask any questions and Acts chapter 13 was two you know um, uh, when uh, uh, a group of believers were fasting and praying we look at that uh, in, in some time now uh, the Holy Spirit uh, you know spoke to each one of them even they even though they were a group even though they were a, a community of believers he spoke to each one of them the same thing said you know separate for me Barnabas and Saul for the work of the ministry uh, for which I have called them and uh, the group does it and we see the powerful ministry that Barnabas and Saul, who's also called Paul, uh, did for the Lord, okay, in extending God's kingdom. So the voice of the Holy Spirit or the Spirit speaking is, uh, you know, uh, something that is much stronger than the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. We looked at how the ways in which the Holy Spirit bears inner witness in our spirit man, uh, but the voice of the Holy Spirit is uh, something that comes much stronger than uh, how he bears inner witness in our spirit man. Okay, so um, uh, the voice of the spirit, uh, you know, is released through uh, words in our spirit man, and it's much more stronger and much more clearer, um, and in, in some cases in a very loud manner. Uh, and the voice of the spirit is often more uh, directive and instructive, like, you know, what we uh, saw in uh, the case of Philip, you know, uh, the voice was clear, directive and instructive, go near and overtake that uh, chariot or to Ezekiel, you know, shut, uh, go shut yourself inside your uh, house or to um, uh, uh, Peter, you know, behold, three men are seeking you. So uh, the voice of the spirit that comes is very instructive and uh, directive. Um, uh, how do we differentiate between the inner witness of the Holy Spirit and the voice of the Holy Spirit? The inner witness of the Holy Spirit comes as impressions in our spirit man. And the voice of the spirit comes as words which are released in our uh, spirit man okay so often the voice of the holy spirit will be also coupled with other expressions uh, such as visions dreams or prophecy or through the gifts of the uh, spirit and we will be uh, looking at that uh, my voice is not clear can somebody unmute your mics and speak and tell me if my voice is not clear please Oh, very clear, okay. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the inner witness of the Holy Spirit comes as impressions in our spirit man and the voice of the Holy Spirit comes as words that are released in our spirit man. Yes, uh, Shani? You're going a little bit fast. Can you repeat that about the um, what you were just saying about the um, the Holy Spirit and the inner? You were saying, which, can you repeat that again? Okay, so you uh, you say uh, uh, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit comes as impressions. We feel the impression uh, in our spirit man and we know God is speaking to us. We know what he's telling us. We know what he's directing us to do. But how do we differentiate that with the voice of the Holy Spirit? The voice of the Holy Spirit comes as uh, clear, audible words that are released in our uh, spirit man. Okay. Uh, so often the voice of the Holy Spirit will be coupled with other expressions uh, such as visions, uh, dreams or prophecy or even through the gifts of the Holy uh, Spirit. Uh, Nisi John, you are, you are telling me that my voice is not clear and that you cannot hear me. Uh, I've asked the other students, everyone has told me that they can hear me very clear and loud. Uh, so I think there's some problem with your, uh, uh, you know, uh, device which you're using. So please check that. Thank you. Uh, 
So often the voice of the Holy Spirit will be coupled with other expressions. It can be visions, dreams, prophecy, or gifts of the Spirit. Uh, now, to help us understand the voice of the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, we can, um, uh, you know, classify that into, you know, just uh, broader areas. Uh, we can classify that as the inner voice of the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, very uh, the audible voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Spirit in prophecy, and also the collective witness of the Holy Spirit's leading. So we we'll just look at this uh, briefly so you can understand uh, what we are speaking about the voice of the Holy Spirit and how do we identify when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. So the inner voice of the Holy Spirit is God speaking clearly to our spirit man. Uh, we do not uh, hear a sound, but we receive the message very, very uh, clearly. It's like uh, uh, information, knowledge, uh, words in terms of information and knowledge that comes in our spirit without the medium of sound. Okay, so there'll be no sound. You can't hear an audible voice, but you can just feel it like an audible voice, but it'll just be like words. It'll just be like uh, information and knowledge uh, that comes into your spirit man without the medium of uh, sound. Okay. And the instructions that you receive can be uh, a line, a sentence, a phrase, uh, and will just give you specific instructions and directions from the Lord, what you need to do, what you need to uh, say, what you need to speak and things like that. Okay. So, um, uh, some examples that we can look at is already what we have, uh, what I've already mentioned in the case of Philip, in the case of Peter and Ezekiel, uh, you know, the spirit spoke to them to the inner voice, um, you know, and uh, in, in some cases we know when we read scripture, you know, the prophet says the word of the Lord came to me. Okay. So this in uh, could be cases where you know uh, they received the word of the Lord uh, through the voice of the Holy um, Spirit. Okay, um, there are some examples that Pastor has given about his own personal um, life. You can read that uh, later on to understand. Uh, but you know, when you receive what the Holy Spirit is speaking in your inner man, you think it is like an audible voice, but it will just be words, but it will just be, a, a, a you know, you know, deep within that, hey, this is the Holy Spirit telling you, speaking you, you know, guiding you, instructing you uh, uh, what to do. Okay, so even when you're praying uh, for somebody, uh, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit can just put in, uh, you know, in your heart what to pray for them, uh, what to speak over their lives, or if you've forgotten something, or you're ministering somewhere, you've forgotten something, the Holy Spirit can just remind you. It can come like a voice, it can sound, but you would not hear any sound, but you know, it's just like, you know, somebody speaking in your spirit, man. And then you have the audible voice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the voice of the Spirit comes very audibly to the person, um, who is speaking to you, uh, you know, uh, like young Samuel in the temple, uh, he heard the audible voice of God and he thought it was Eli who was calling him. And, you know, he uh, runs to Eli uh, two times. And the third time Eli tells him, you know, uh, when God speaks to you again, just say, you know, God, uh, uh, speak, Lord, your servant is uh, listening. So, you know, uh, it was only Samuel who heard the voice of God, the audible voice of God. But we know that Eli did not hear uh, uh, the voice. Okay. So there are many experiences as of prophets as well, when they've heard the audible voice of God, you know, um, uh, Ezekiel is often stated saying that I heard the voice of one speaking, you know, or uh, he mentions in Ezekiel chapter two, verse two, he says, I heard him who spoke to me. So God can speak to us this way as well. Although it does not appear to be very common, uh, the audible voice of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, is not very common a way God speaks to us. But the most common way that God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit is through the inner witness or the inner voice of the Holy uh, Spirit. And God, you know, can do what he pleases. Uh, if he chooses uh, 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 to speak through the audible voice of the Holy Spirit, he can even choose to do that. Okay.
The third thing is uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit in prophecy. Uh, we will be studying uh, about this later on in, 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 a, in, a, in a chapter uh, specifically about um, how the Holy Spirit speaks to us in prophecy. Um, but uh, we will just address that a little later on. Okay. The fourth thing is the collective witness of the Holy Spirit's um, leading. Now, the Holy Spirit can also speak to a group of people. And I also, uh, you know, mentioned uh, an example that, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the beginning in, in Acts chapter 13, verse 2, where a group of believers were together uh, fasting and praying. And the Holy Spirit specifically spoke to each one of them, saying, now separate for me uh, Paul and uh, 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 or Barnabas and Saul, who's also called Paul, for the work of the ministry. And since each one of them heard that uh, uh, clear voice, the Holy Spirit speaking to them, uh, they set them apart. And we know the uh, amazing work that both of them did uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, extending God's kingdom and, uh, you know, preaching and teaching God's uh, word. So the inner, uh, vo the the Holy Spirit's leading, directing, uh, uh, you know, speaking God's will, revealing God's will, can also come to a group of uh, people. It can come to the inner voice, or it can come to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. And multiple people, uh, you know, uh, will testify that they heard uh, the Holy Spirit speaking the same uh, thing. And I think this can be a very useful uh, way, uh, you know, uh, 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 in terms of, uh, you know, leadership teams uh, uh, in situations where people are working together at teams and, you know, they are um, or doing the same mission work or uh, ministering in a certain place or pastors coming together, you know, uh, 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 planning, strategizing uh, for missions uh, in the city or in the nation. And, you know, when they're trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, plan things, strategize things, the Holy Spirit can speak to each one of them individually and they can come uh, and they can all come to a consensus, you know, together. Yes, you know, this is right. We can do this. Uh, I feel this in my spirit, man. This is right. This is what we can do. Some people can say, yes, the Holy Spirit is uh, saying this is what we need to do as a team for our city or for our church or for our nation. And uh, uh, it, it has been very, very powerful. So just a few um, examples, um, you know, um, is in Acts chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. Uh, now, the church in Antioch, there were certain prophets, you know, uh, uh, who were uh, there and, uh, you know, um, uh, they were all, like I said, you know, fasting and praying and the Holy Spirit told them to set apart uh, Barnabas and Saul for uh, the work that the, the, the Lord has called them to. And then it says in verse 3 that having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and they sent them away. Now, why was there a consensus in, you know, uh, you know, laying hands on them and sending them away for mission work, even um, as a church in Antioch, is because each one of them, you know, would have heard through the inner voice of the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit asking them to do. So we see that these five leaders, they were just fasting and praying, um, and the Holy Spirit ministered to them, and they all acted on what the Holy Spirit told them to do without a uh, doubt. Another example we read is in Acts chapter 15, uh, where Acts chapter 15 is uh, has a record of the first council in Jerusalem. So we see uh, a, a few of the elders and uh, uh, Paul and Barnabas, uh, 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 you know, they take along with them um, uh, Titus and they go to uh, from from the church in Antioch they go to the church at uh, Jerusalem the main headquarters church the main church there in Jerusalem just to discuss whether you know uh, uh, 
uh, the Gentiles who are coming into the faith, whether they should follow the Jewish customs uh, or rituals, uh, mainly of circumcision. So they had a council and, uh, you know, the, uh, the apostles, the elders in the Church of Jerusalem and uh, these people who went along with uh, Paul and Barnabas from the church at Antioch, they met together, they were discussing and it was something that was a very uh, important decision that had to be made in the early church because there was a lot of controversies around this. You know, the Gentiles were coming to the faith and they were... Uh, you know, uh, uh, forced by the Jews uh, who were also believers uh, that they have to be circumcised. And so, you know, there was a lot of deliberation on this uh, whole uh, topic. There was a lot of uh, discussion, uh, but it's uh, very uh, encouraging to read in uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 28. It says, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us, this is what the all of them are saying together, all of them who were there in that council meeting, uh, they, they testified saying, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden, that is to lay upon you means the Gentiles, no greater burden than these necessary uh, things. Okay, so basically uh, they said hey it was not necessary for them to uh, follow jewish uh, customs and laws of eating specific food or following specific uh, days and also the sign of circumcision uh, but you know uh, not to burden the gentiles and how did all of them come to a consensus all of them who were there were jews how did they all come to a consensus is because the holy spirit spoke to uh, them. So they were in agreement on this very important uh, issue and they were all convinced because it was the Holy Spirit speaking to each one of them in the church and hence there was a collective witness that was made and which was very helpful to uh, all the Gentiles who were coming into the uh, faith. Another example uh, we see is in Acts chapter 16, verses 6 to 10. Uh, this is uh, uh, during Paul's second missionary journey uh, when he and his team were traveling through uh, the same places, uh, visiting, revisiting the places that they had gone in their first missionary journey. Uh, they were in the region of Galatia. You know, uh, that is uh, Lystra, Derby, um, uh, uh, and, you know, uh, those places in Galatia. And uh, they were planning to, you know, uh, uh, and they had come to Mysia and they tried to go into Bithynia. But, you know, uh, the Spirit did not, the Holy Spirit did not permit them. Okay. Uh, so they had their plan and agenda. Uh, this is what, these are the, uh, the places that we will visit during our second missionary journey so they were following their uh, their uh, itinerary their plan that they had made um, but you know the holy spirit intervened and stopped them and did not permit them uh, uh, to go into uh, bithynia so they passed by mysia and they came to taurus and when they were there paul had a vision and in that vision, he sees a man from Macedonia, uh, you know, who was standing before Paul and pleading with him saying, you know, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after Paul saw that uh, the vision, he, you know, uh, he knew that it is the Holy Spirit telling him to go to Macedonia. And so he, uh, you know, must have conveyed that to his team. And, you know, uh, they all concluded that, yes, the Lord had called us uh, to preach the gospel to the Macedonians, to go to Macedonia and preach to uh, them. So we see how the Holy Spirit was directing Apostle Paul. And when he shared that with his team, his team also agreed. Uh, why was that? Because I'm sure this was the Holy Spirit uh, who was also guiding them and uh, leading them. Okay. So we do not now know exactly, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, we do not know how exactly they determined that the Holy Spirit was not uh, you know, permitting them to go uh, to, uh, you know, the places that they had decided, uh, but they had received specific direction and um, uh, leading. And so through the collective witness 
of the spirits leading you know uh, uh, you know paul and his team uh, agreed together and they moved to uh, macedonia and we see after that god the holy spirit directs them to other places that he wanted them to um, visit so uh, you know there are times when um, the holy spirit you know uh, will lay a burden on your heart as a leader and you want to communicate that to your team you know uh, and it's important that you know the team members are also uh, you know in sync with you and agreeing that hey yes you know uh, this is what we should be doing uh, you know there could be some people who will oppose that who would think differently who would have mm -hmm. other plans who would also think why this is not going to work but you know when the holy spirit speaks to each one of them you know when he's laying that burden on the the heart of the uh, the leader it can also be uh, you know spouse uh, you know you and your spouse praying for something for your family the holy spirit is witnessing and testifying to both of you the same time you know go ahead and do this or don't do this whatever it is but it's important that you know if the holy spirit is going to bear collective witness uh, to people in uh, in the in the context of a team that each one of them are work, walking in submission uh, to God, uh, in uh, intimacy with God, and also in submission to uh, one another. Okay, uh, so when people are walking in unity and in oneness, in one accord, then when the Holy Spirit speaks, they can hear. But if there is no unity and oneness, you know, uh, even if the Holy Spirit is speaking to them, directing them, there will be no uh, agreement. Okay. So the Holy Spirit leads through the collective witness, um, uh, and we've seen various examples. Yes, Shani? I'm trying to make sure I'm understanding, because I was trying to wait to ask a question until you finished. So, cause I, from, uh, I just, so from my understanding, from what you were saying in the beginning, in terms of, uh, I was trying to make sure I understand what a collective witness is, is, is it the Holy Spirit speaking to a group of people? But then when you gave the example for Paul in Acts 16, verses 6 through 10, it's just the Holy Spirit just speaking to Paul, and then he goes and tells other people. So, And I know you said sometimes it can be a leader. So what is collective witnessing? Is it just, it's, it's, it can't be like a group of people because an example that Paul is not, it's just him. Is it that it could be a leader, God speaking to the leader, and then the people just come in agreement? That's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to get an understanding. Yeah, good question. So if you look at Acts chapter 16, what you're referring to, yes, Paul, uh, as a leader, you know, uh, uh, got this vision because he was, you know, leading that whole mission strip, and he had planned everything. So, you know, the Holy Spirit spoke to him. Uh, but, you know, this is uh, 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 Luke writing, uh, you know, uh, the book of Acts, who's also part of Paul's missionary team uh, or missions team. Look at what he says in verse 10. Now, after he had uh, seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. So it is not that, you know, here is we see that it's the we and the us. So there's a team speaking, saying that, hey, yes, Paul had seen the vision. He had shared it with the team. But how did they all come to a consensus? Uh, you know, there could have been people who said, hey, no, Paul, you know, we had this planned out. We should go. You know, how sure are you that we have to go to Macedonia? We didn't hear from the Holy Spirit. There could have been a lot of um disagreements people opposing it or uh, things like that but why did everyone feel you know it, it says you know uh, after you seen the vision immediately we sought to go to macedonia so it was why did everyone decide yes we will all go to macedonia no questions asked you know it's not saying there i'm just implying it's because the holy spirit would have also you know, uh, uh, bad inner witness or spoken to uh, each one of them in the team. And they concluded that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. OK, 
Okay, so it was an agreement, and how was it an agreement if it was not the inner witness of the Holy Spirit or them hearing the Holy Spirit, uh, and they they also agreeing, and this unity and oneness is because the Holy Spirit would have also ministered to them, uh, each one in the team, and that's why they all felt uh, together. Yes, that we need to go and preach the gospel to Macedonia. Okay, I understand. So the, that that I understand it clearly. So it's basically. So I guess I was right when I took down my notes initially about the collective witnesses when the Holy Spirit is speaking to a group of people. Then that's basically. Am I right to conclude that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, even as the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, uh, speaks to us, uh, you know, while hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, it can be very, very exciting. Uh, but we must be very cautious in this area because Satan and his demons are also uh, deceivers and imitators. Uh, they can pretend to speak to us as though it is God speaking or it's the Holy Spirit speaking or the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us. And it can even lead believers astray. And this is so true. And the voice of uh, Satan and his demons uh, can come so clearly, can come so assuringly that we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, can get deceived uh, because they, they are deceivers and imitators and uh, we need to be very, very careful. And hence, we need to test what we are hearing, whether we're hearing uh, what we are hearing is from the Holy Spirit or is it, you know, Satan is demons trying to deceive and lead us away or whether it is, um, you know, it is from God or the evil spirits. So uh, how do we test it? We've already, uh, I've already shared that or outlined that earlier uh, in the previous chapter, in um, uh, chapter uh, four, I've already uh, mentioned that uh, last week. So, you know, uh, it is good for us to, uh, you know, uh, test those things, you know, ensure that, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that we can, how we can test is see if it's aligned uh, to the written scripture, ask God to reveal to you to scripture, you know, also, you know, just uh, spend time, extended time in prayer and worship uh, so that your natural emotions and affections are kept uh, subject to the, the Holy Spirit and ensure that, you know, whatever you're doing, uh, whether it's glorifying Jesus Christ and not your uh, self, and also see if it's aligned to the plan and the purposes of uh, God. So all of these can be indicators, can be a way to test the waters of what God, you know, whether you're hearing from God, uh, the, or the Holy Spirit, or, you know, it's uh, Satan or the evil spirits trying to uh, deceive you. Okay. So that is uh, chapter five for us, the inner voice of the Holy Spirit. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, there are no questions. Then uh, we'll move on to the next chapter. Uh, the next chapter is chapter six, which is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to be teaching uh, this chapter because you are already studying the course on uh, the Holy Spirit. And Pastor Jay Kumar Isaiah will teach you about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to move on to chapter seven. Is that okay? Right, you'll learn about in detail, uh, 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 you know, in the course on the Holy Spirit, you will learn about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so we'll move on to chapter seven uh, on dreams and visions. Okay. Uh, so the Holy Spirit uh, speaks through us uh, through dreams, visions, and prophecies. I, I, I mentioned in the earlier chapter when we were studying that, that, uh, you know, uh, not just through the inner voice or the audible voice of the Holy Spirit or the collective witness of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit also speaks through us through dreams, uh, visions, and uh, prophecies. And so we also saw that in Acts chapter 16, how uh, the Holy Spirit uh, in, a, in a vision spoke to um uh, uh, to Paul, uh, we also will look at various instances how the Holy Spirit reveals his will, his plan and purposes and his direction to people uh, through dreams and through uh, visions. Okay. Uh, and 
we need to be open uh, to the Holy Spirit speaking to us through dreams, visions, and prophecies, uh, because uh, we read in Acts chapter two that you know uh, uh, the the prophecy there, you know what Joel speaks, uh, and uh, Peter is quoting that in Acts chapter two in his sermon uh, on the day of Pentecost. He says, you know, the last days, uh, Joel uh, prophesied, saying, the last days, God says He would pour out His Spirit on all flesh your sons and daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams okay so in the in the last days that we are in you know god is going to uh, reveal uh, you know um, things through uh, prophecy dreams and visions and hence we need to be open uh, to these ways through which the holy spirit will speak to uh, us so we look at each one of them and try to understand how the holy spirit speaks what is the difference between a dream a vision a trance uh, and then we'll uh, move on to study about prophecies okay so dreams uh, you know dreams can have uh, you, you know when you have a dream right uh, and dreams can have three different sources uh, you know uh, uh, one of the sources that uh, dreams can arise from is when our minds are preoccupied with certain things about our life or our ministry or what we are doing or or the uh, you know circumstances and situations or the challenges that we are facing so one of the sources can be our mind uh, secondly god can also speak to us through dreams and thirdly dreams could also be uh, you know due to demonic uh, interference so when you have bad dreams um, when you have nightmares uh, are all through demonic um, inter uh, interferences and how uh, did demonic interferences come uh, is because we have opened uh, doors in our lives uh, because of what we are watching or things that we are engaging in things that we are addicted to or uh, you know immoral lifestyles or whatever you know uh, leaves the door open for demonic interferences and uh, they can trouble us and they can uh, you know uh, give us nightmares when we are uh, sleeping yes prem Uh, sorry, Prem, I can't uh, uh, hear you. I can hear you, sorry, but, you know, it's echoing, so I'm not able to hear you clearly. Hello? Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, now it's much better. Yes, please go yes, ahead. Ma'am, yesterday we were having a class with Pastor Ashish right too, and mm -hmm. it, it was about movie and, uh, like, where are you, where, in what circle you are in. And uh, so, uh, like... Um, I asked him that can we watch horror movies or something it's going to affect our life or not. So uh, like uh, he told us that it's not going to affect your life. It's like not affect but you can watch it. But it's that means that if you are taking something in your heart, if you are watching it on the purpose of knowing something or studying something, or but if you are taking it in your heart in a way that okay it's real thing it's that thing it's that thing so ma'am how can it opens a demonic uh, like door for us in life that well, i want to know like how it happens yeah thank you for your question so uh, you know how what door does it open to so it is uh, basically uh, uh, you know, even if you're just looking at it or you're watching it or, you know, just for entertainment or, uh, you know, um, uh, even for receiving knowledge, uh, it can be like something that Satan can use against you in terms of fear tactics, you know, uh, just to generate fear uh, so that you are, you know, what, what happens when you uh, are, uh, you know, filled with fear, you know, you become a slave to fear, you're not able to think right, you're not able to do things, uh, even the areas where you were confident enough to do things, to step into things, do things, you know, it, uh, you are now gripped 
gripped with fear, even for simple things like even like crossing the road or, you know, uh, doing some common things which you were you used to do, you know. So uh, uh, it's unnecessary just opening uh, the doors of your heart or your spirit man or yourself to uh, the spirit of fear. And that can lead to oppression, that can lead to depression, uh, uh, that can lead to, you know, uh, just being, uh, uh, you know, also stopping you from uh, doing what God has called you to do, the plans and the purpose. So one of the things that Satan really uses against us, a weapon is fear. You know, fear really uh, can overwhelm us to the point that, you know, it uh, just stops us from just doing even normal activities, leave alone doing things for God, uh, you know, so much of, and then there's anxiety that comes in, there is depression that comes in, and we just feel so oppressed in our spirit, man. But everything, oh, oh, how did it just come? It just came through watching uh, uh, something, and then, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, becomes a strong hold because what you see then becomes like an, you know, thought becomes an imagination. Uh, that imagination becomes like something that you are, uh, you know, uh, in agreement with. And, you know, that becomes a stronghold in your mind. Yes. I hope that helped, Prem. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I also want to know about the studies. Like uh, there are study of demonology yes. and people become demonologists, right? Mm -hmm. To overcome demons, to help other people to overcome demons, to t study about exorcism and all. Mm -hmm. So uh, for to study those things, does it mean that you need a very strong heart, a fearless mind and fearless heart in, in Christ? Demon, demonology is something that any believer needs to know and study. It's basically talking about what, uh, you know, your authority that God has given you, the finished what finished work on the cross, what he has, you know, already um, purchased for you on the cross. Uh, you know, your, what is your... Uh, you, what is your authority as a son and daughter in the kingdom of God? How to exercise your kingdom authority and power over demons? Demons are not uh, powerful beings. Um, on the cross, Jesus already, uh, uh, you know, nullified every principality and powers. Uh, they have uh, no authority. They have no power. Uh, you know, the uh, Satan and his forces are paralyzed. You know what a paralyzed person cannot do anything right their powers are nullified but what uh, satan does against us is you know um uh, uh, one of the things he does is this guerrilla war tactics, right? Guerrilla war tactics are when people are, uh, you know, have no rights uh, whatsoever in that specific territory and land because of what the government uh, has imposed on them. They try to terrorize people just through fear tactics. Hey, if you're not going to do this, we're going to kill your family, we're going to murder you, you know, shoot you down and things like that. So fear and because of fear, people give in uh, to them. And that is what uh, Satan does. And so uh, demonology is all about studying, you know, the weapons God has given to us. What is the authority that we have? What are the weapons of warfare that God has given to us and how to use those weapons of uh, warfare? And so it just helps us to uh, fight and engage our enemy because he is real. Yes. And what he does is he just plants a thought. All he does is he plants a thought. He, you know, and that, you know, uh, James says that, you know, um, we are tempted when we are drawn away by our own evil desires and we are enticed and that gives birth to sin. So it's not Satan who, you know, uh, uh, tempts us, but he just puts in a thought. That thought becomes a desire. That thought becomes something that we uh, dwell on, we engage in, you know, and when it's full blown, you know, we want to act on it. And, you know, uh, that becomes a, a, a lifestyle. And that also leads eventually to a a stronghold. So all Satan does is just put a thought, an evil thought, idea, uh, a plan in our minds, and that is it. 
you know the rest is when we are drawn away by our own passions and evil uh, desires yeah so that did that help Prem? yes ma'am yes it's just that uh how if satan is putting any scary thought in our minds is it is is it we are watering that thought or not right so what you do is when you that scary thought comes you immediately uh, you know immediately defend that thought with the word of god and uh, speak god's word god has not given me a spirit of fear uh, a timidity or a fear of power love and sound mind you declare that and you declare that you know this is not true uh, this thought is not true that's why philippians chapter 3 says whatever is true whatever is right whatever is noble pure lovely admirable think about such things so if that thought is not any of that falls in the list you say hey this is not the thought from god just throw it out you know so you defend that with the word of god the truth of god's word and you don't accept the lies of the enemy okay ma'am thank you thank you Akash's question is after watching a movie why are we disturbed and prayer also not going properly why yes it's because you know why are we disturbed because we have seen things that uh, you know are disturbing uh, it's not pleasing right even if you look you, 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 you know you are out somewhere and you just see somebody screaming at somebody else it can be a husband wife fighting on the street or the parents screaming at their child or the parent you know uh, beating their child they might have a valid reason for disciplining that child but you feel really bad you you know you 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 feel you're very sensitive you feel very bad you feel very hurt uh, you're not able to concentrate uh, you know uh, I, I remember you know just the other day i was leaving bible college going uh, back home uh, i was on the bus and i, I saw this uh, grandma uh, you know all the way she was just uh, you know so angry with her her uh, her granddaughter she was you know pinching her poking her you know speaking bad words over her you know and saying things that were so uh you know evil and rude and bad and i was just standing there and i was just watching it and i was just so disturbed you know in my spirit in my mind it, it just went on for two days i was just praying for that uh the child because she was saying that you know uh, she's speaking on the phone and saying when we come back home either she will stay in that house or i will stay in that house i don't want this uh, uh a child and it all really affected me so yes you know even when we look at some little things or something in in our family you know somebody screams at us shouts at us it disturbs us right so when you're looking at these gross images and gross images and you know things that are not uh are violent things that are not uh, uh you know pleasing uh you know it is going to disturb our peace you know it is going to disturb our minds it is going to bring in anxious thoughts it's going to aggravate those anxious thoughts and and fears and it's going to open the doors for the enemy and that is why you're not able to pray as well so why watch movies like that watch movies that are uplifting engaging uh with strengthen your spirit man uh you know even if you watch just normal uh, movies you know they have such uh, uh you know uh, images that are there things that are not right it works in your subconscious mind and when you're sleeping it all comes it brings in negative dirty impure thoughts uh, so engage in activities that are good, that edifies your spirit, man, that helps you to grow spiritually. Uh, yeah, and gives you good thoughts as well. Did that help, Akash? Okay, thank you. So coming back to dreams, uh, dreams are three sources, our mind, it is God speaking and also demonic uh, interference, okay? So God, uh, does God speak to us through dreams? Yes, uh, how do we know it? Uh, the scripture tells us that, Psalms chapter 16, verse seven, uh, it says, anyone would like to read that? Psalms chapter 16, verse seven, would you like to unmute your mic and speak please? I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel my heart also instructs me in the night seasons amen thank you vinay so it says here that god uh, you know gives us counsel and instructs us in the night seasons that means even when we are sleeping god can 
instruct us and lead us because our minds are all calm uh, you know uh, bodies are all calm you know god can counsel us and instruct us in the night season okay job chapter 33 verses 14 to 18 it says you know god speaks to us in one way or the other and you know yet man does not perceive it he says in verse 15 it can be a dream or it can be a vision in the night and then in verse 16 he says that then he opens the ears of men okay so here it's talking about you know when god speaks to us in dreams or vision in the night when deep sleep falls upon men or when they're slumbering on their beds you know he says he opens the ears of men that means not our physical ears he opens our spiritual ears okay i remember i said last week um now, last class that are just like our physical man has senses to which we are able to receive information from the world around us, environment around us, the same way our spirit man also has senses so we can hear. Okay, and he says in verse 17, in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man, he keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the so it's very interesting in Job chapter 33, where, you know, God is speaks to us through dreams when we are sleeping and he causes our inner ears, our spiritual ears to open and he imparts his instruction, guidance and direction through dreams, um, which will, you know, he, which he wants us to, you know, prevent us from doing things that are wrong stepping into things that are wrong wrong relationships wrong moves uh, wrong ideas or doing things that can endanger us and harm us okay we'll stop here we'll go for our break and then we'll come back and continue thank you